What's going on, YouTube tonight? This is Noblop2000, welcoming you to Shovel Knight, the Shovel of Hope. I've literally, this is literally my fifth attempt to try to record this, because something went wrong at every turn. But I hope, just, I hope that I've gotten this right this time. Anyway, so, for those of you who don't know, I absolutely love Shovel Knight. In fact, I love it so much, I've bought it on three systems already, the Wii U, the 3DS, and the PC, of course, because I'm recording this now. I have the Shovel Knight Amiibo, and I'm thinking about buying it on PS4, just for the sake of having the, it, and that I can do the Kratos boss fight. I really want to do that. But, as for now, we're doing this, and the reason I'm recording this is actually because I want to do a full-on, uh, I want to make, I'm going to make this a series because I'm going to use the footage for another project I'm working on. And, uh, this project is a lo little different from anything I've done in the past, but it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. Anyway, we're gonna do a normal Shovel Knight thing. I'm gonna do the same project with other, uh, campaigns, but I'm just gonna do that after. So for now, let's enter my name. Sir Dupes, or it, the Sir of the Dupe variety. Body swap? No, we're not doing the body swap mode. But, I mean, that would be cool, but nah. Anyway, long ago, the lands were untamed and roamed by legendary adventurers. Of all heroes, none shone brighter than Shovel Knight and Shield. But their travels together ended at the Tower of Fate, when a cursed amulet wrought a terrible magic. When Shovel Knight awoke, the tower was sealed and Shield Knight was gone. His bro spirit broken, a grieving Shovel Knight went into a life of solitude. And then a samurai wielding a magic sword. <laughs> I couldn't help myself, but without champions, the lamb was seized by a vile power, the Enchantress and her Order of No Now the tower is unsealed and devastation looms. A new adventure is about to begin. Okay, I love this game so much, I can't wait for the King Knight uh, campaign, and I really really want there to be, like, a Shovel Knight 2 that, like, has, like, multiplayer as a basic thing you can do with a lot of different playable characters. That would be something awesome. I would love to see that. Like, maybe Shield Knight could be playable. I would love to see that. And, of course, Plague Knight would have to return as playable. Like, I've actually thought of a, cool, of a few cool ideas for what could be in that if it were to happen. Like, example, uh, like, a giant, um, like, a big castle base. Like, the whole story goes that what you're doing is you're trying to stop this evil or whatever. They can make something up with that. But, um... Like, you ha you are actually for forming a sort of uh, adventurer's guild kind of thing. Of people who, like, of other, like, knight characters who would help others. And possible playable characters that can appear as you unlock them would be, uh... Shovel Knight, Shield Knight... Well, Shovel Knight's already gonna be in there, but Black Knight... Uh, who would play slightly differently than Shovel Knight. Maybe, uh, Shield Knight could possibly be in there, but already available from the get-go. And, um, uh, possibly Reese, one of the wandering characters, could be really cool. And, like, you know, other returning characters, like Plague Knight and such. Of course you wouldn't be able to have, like, uh, Spectre Knight be playable, because, you know, his whole story is a prequel. So he's already too powerful by the time uh, that would happen. But what would work with that is, um... Instead of, uh, what was it, uh, instead of Spectre Knight, you have Reese playing very similarly to Spectre Knight. That's, that character ties in with the whole, with the, uh, Shovel Knight campaign. Not, no, the Spectre Knight campaign, goddammit. So anyway, that would be, uh, that would just be something kind of cool. You know, tied in with the, uh, the Spectorio Knight campaign. But, like, yeah, there would be that, and there would be, like, 
I don't know, you can make it like the base you're updating because of that whole uh, Adventurer's Guild thing you're kind of doing. Uh, the base you're, you're updating could be, um, it could be like, um, it, it, it could be like a thing where the money you have you can spend on upgrades, um, which, you know, or, or you could spend it on, like, uh, the base itself by depositing it in this vault area. And when you upgrade the base, you unlock more characters and such. You know, you, you'd be able to unlock more characters, whereas, um, getting the upgrades unlocks better stuff for a current character. Which, you know, would be pretty cool. Maybe one of the base things you upgrade allows, a uh, Plague Knight to, um, to appear as, like, selling, uh, like, stuff. Like, what would be equivalent to, like, potions and explosives? Kind of like a few different things he could, him and Mona could be selling, like, that they would make there. And then maybe, uh, Plague Knight comes in as, like, a playable, uh, like, comes in as a playable character later, um, after you've done a certain thing. Yeah. That could be pretty cool, because then you'd have him, and while he's playable, you, you don't switch to him normally like you do with the other character. You have to talk to him in the shop kind of thing, you know? That would be kind of... I, I don't know. I, those are just, like, ideas I've had for this kind of thing. I tend to be a good idea guy when it comes to this stuff. Like, I think of these ideas a lot for, like, the games I like. I tend to think of a lot of ideas of what could... What could go here to make this game better, you know? Or what could possibly be in a future uh, version of the game or a sequel, you know? That's just where my mind goes when I play video games. I like to think about this stuff, and, you know, Shovel Knight is primed and ready with this kind of stuff. But, and, of course, you'd have to fight other knights. Uh, you could possibly make, like, I don't know, even if they can't think of all of them, they could just make it a contest. You know, like, um, like how Mega Man does. Did after Mega Man 1. Mega Man 2 through uh, well, all the other classic Mega Mans were all like contests to see who could like, and this is a kind of, this kind of harkens back to those old games, so that would be kind of cool as like a little throwback to that stuff. Have it be like an online contest of sorts, of you send in your ideas and the character might make it in. Now that would be kind of cool. Well, I, I think at least it would be pretty cool. Seems like it would be a fun idea, but I don't know, like, I, I'm, I'm not the devs, I can't really make these decisions, nor do I know how well they would work out in reality, I'm just saying it would be a cool idea, but, you know, I, I am excited to see what they do in the future, Yacht Club Games, this, they, they made an amazing game with this, because I bought the 3DS version first, because, I, I don't know, I, I just ended up getting that one first, and, uh, Oh man, did I love it. And I regretted not getting it sooner for the PC, because I, I... No, actually, I think at that time, I don't remember. I don't even remember if I had a, my gaming... I don't think I had my gaming PC set up yet at that time. Like, I was... I mean, I still had a computer, but I think I was running on my, my mom's old laptop. Which was like a Sony Bio from 2011. So it was top of the line then, but like, it had aged some. It's not like it wouldn't be able to handle this. But, you know, that was kind of a thing, I guess. Anyway, let's kill this Bubble Dragon. Sorry, Bubble Dragon. Double Bubble. I hate this enemy placement. That one specifically. Because he pisses me off. I thought it was going to fall to my death there. Either way. I don't need to know what my friends are up to while I'm recording. But yeah, I love this game. Shovel Knight is... It's probably one of... It's probably my favorite indie game of all time. And for those of you that don't know, indie games are what I love the most from gaming. Like, it's kind of obvious. I love video games. But indie games have brought me so much joy. Like, Hover Revolt of Gamers, Shovel Knight, um, Freedom Planet I love, too. Uh, just indie box in itself. For those of you who don't know, I used to do unboxings of that, and that was for fun. I was not sponsored because I'm not. I don't have enough following to be sponsored. But I would. I, I do love indie box. 
it's a great service, and I still get mine. I haven't even played Nefarious or Hollow Knight, Typo Man. Those are like some of the last few boxes I had, and I, I didn't play any of them yet. Like, I know that uh, Super Meat Boy had a version of it, but I already played that because I already owned the game prior to Indie Box. But, and they sent me a nice little card that says, uh, a very special message from Team Meat. You're dumb. Anyway, holy shit, I'm already here. Like, I was only half paying attention to that. Yeah, I think I did everything. Okay, yeah. I knew you'd show your face sooner or later, the Cerulean coward. Turn back, Shovel Knight. There's nothing here for you anymore. Stand aside, Black Knight. I have no quarrel with you. I must return to the Tower of Fate. Your time away has dulled your senses. Can't you see? This entire valley has been conquered by the Enchantress, and her invincible knights of the Order of No Quarter stand between you and the Tower. But none of that matters, because anyone after the Enchantress has to go through me. Steal thy shovel! I'm tired of these Skype messages appearing! Oh, shit! Fuck! Fuck, 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 duck, it's hit. Oh my god, how was I able to get that many hits on him? Oh, 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 get, get fucked, get fucked! <laughs> Dude! Okay, out of all the times I've recorded this, I recorded this, I've never wiped the floor with him that bad. I've done that on other playthroughs that I didn't record, but wow! <laughs> Granted, that's nothing special, he's like the easiest boss in the game. But I like him because he's such a good boss to get used to the game with, like... When it comes down to it, it's it's good to get used to the boss of... bosses, like, get used to the gameplay because he's sort of like an easy version of the Shadow Link, of the Dark Link fight in, um, Zelda 2, where it, like, tests all the skills you've learned up to that point. In the tutorial level, you're already tested on all those skills, but this kind of makes it a little... You know, bigger like that. Oh god. Oh, save you! No, shield knight. No, I save y'all! Oh. Well, that happened. <laughs> I like doing the little leg squats. Also, gotta get my money. Nah, 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 nah. Bitch better have my money. <laughs> Wait, no, that's not how the song goes. Fuck! It goes, wait till I get my money right. Fuck! That wasn't even intentional. I legitimately fucked that up. I, I, <laughs> a bit of a fuck up sometimes. Well, regardless, let's go buy ourselves uh, an extra health. Yeah! Alright. And don't worry, I know of more ways to get. I'm gonna get even more money just from being in this city because I know how. Damn it. I know how to get more money. Excuse me, lady. This is just. This is my tactic for, like, every time I go into the city because I know how to do this shit. I always go in here. Get all the extra musical notes I can get here. At least for now. And then I sell them back to the bard. And I also do this. This game right here. Because I, I know what to do. Let's spin the bottle. Let's play spin the let's play hit the bottle with a shovel. I love the music though. This game has some great fucking music design. Like it is just Top fucking notch, man. As someone who loves this game to no end, like, the music in this game is like some of the best in indie games. And indie games tend to have a lot of good music. Uh, I would say it's between this and Undertale, as far as uh, musical prowess in games. Like, indie games. No, this Undertale and Hover Revolt of Gamers, because goddamn does Hover Revolt of Gamers have good music. It's literally done by the same person who did the music for Jet Set Radio Future. That's how you know it's good. Let's see, I need to get at least 50 before I can, uh... Oh, shit. Yep, I need to get at least 50, 150 for, uh... 
this actually to work. Like, that's how this this happens. I need a, at least 150, or I wasted 100 gold on that. But yeah, I got it, and I got that. So that just means I get. <laughs> I'm getting more money. Let's go ahead and talk to this guy. Freaking get. It's just. Oh my god. This is perfect. Look at this. Okay, not not yet. Because I want to get the rest of these. Let's uh buy the fishing pole, because that's some good shit. Let's uh get that uh chaos sphere because it's good. Let's buy one of these. And then um and then, uh, with the other amount of money I have, I'm just gonna buy, uh, some of this. You know, actually, if I had the ability to record the Wii U or 3DS version of this game, well, Wii U, because my 3DS is fucking busted, but if I had the ability to record that, I would just play, uh, I would just, uh, play an amiibo run of this game, because that would be fun. Because then I could use the Infinite Dagger. That would be fucking awesome. Also, here's the trout apple. Hello, troupel. Yes, aid me. I want to choose some I-Core. I, I only ever get the health ones. I mean, I know I'm going to need to drink at least all three in order to get an achievement, which I'm going to do, but... Some of the achievements I'm never going to get, so I'm not going to try to 100% this, because I am not going to do the speedrun shit for this game, or even the, uh, try to beat it without dying. It's not going to happen. Also, damn, shake that ass! Finally. I'm glad I don't have to watch that dance every time. Also, whoop. who uses an anchor as a fishing rod? You know, I had never really thought of this until like a few weeks ago, but if this guy's a troutbull and those trout troubles are hanging on the tree right there, does that make those apples his fish eggs? And I'm just like, and I just ate his babies by fishing that out of there. Yeah, I'm gonna go before he gets really pissed because I think I just did that. I think that's what happened. Okay, I, I won't have anything to buy anyway if I turn in that, that item right now. There's nothing I can buy with that and it just risk me losing more money. So instead I'm gonna do this and try not to lose my money. Yeah, I, I've played this game so much. I know the secrets. I know the way the world works. Fuck. All right, let's go back. Whoop. And wait for it. There we go. Yep, the Yacht Club Games Room. Ah, uh, I actually didn't know this existed until the, I. Uh, until my second playthrough of the Plague Knight campaign where I was trying to 100% it and couldn't find one of the Cypher coins. And that's not very well telegraphed. That is a big secret. That is not well telegraphed because no other level in the game does that, where you have to move backwards from the first screen. There is no... and there is nothing to convey that it's there. So it's just a complete and utter secret. And since it's necessary for 100% completing the game, on any playthrough, because there's always a hidden collectible there, whether it be a musical note, cypher coin, or red skull, they're all there. There's one there, always. So, no matter what campaign you're playing on, there's something there. And I assume there's gonna be something there in the King Knight campaign, whatever his collectible is. Which, by the way, oh, I can't wait for that. I, I wanna play as the Decadent Dandy. That That's gonna be some fun shit. That is a, a good goldfish. Ah, uh, I guess that's why it's worth so much money. Ha, uh, puns! They're funny! Not really. Fuck! Whew. 
Seriously though, this game, like, money is the best resource you could possibly have. <laughs> Which, fuck magic bottle, you want money. Not only do they make it satisfying for, uh, to pick up money in this game, but it's also necessary for progression of the game, so it's kinda cool. But, uh, it just makes money all the more satisfying to pick up. Cause, you know, you pick up coins and gems as collectibles in a game, and it feels nice to collect them, usually. But, like, very rarely do you get a game that, like, not only does it feel nice to collect all this shit, but, like, it actually is, like, fucking awesome. Like, like with this, it feels nice to collect all the money because... I know I fucked that up because I'm trying to fucking pay attention here. But, like, it feels nice to grab all that money because you're actually <laughs> gonna use it. And you need to use that to progress in the game, so with every pickup of money you get, you feel like you're progressing a little more in the game, which is fucking fantastic. It's good game feel. God damn, I, I just wanna... I wanna meet the devs behind this game and give them all a hug. And say... And I'll probably cry and say thank you while that happens, because they fucking... They fucking made it. You know what? If not a hug, a, I don't know. Fucking, I'll buy them a drink. I don't have a lot of money, and I can't actually buy alcohol this, uh, until next year. I'm not 21 yet. So, you know, but I'll do something. I'll do something for you. Because this game is amazing. I know I'm just gushing about how amazing this game is, but I love it that much. Like, it legitimately is one of my favorite video games of all time. And definitely my favorite indie game of all time. Which is hard to do, considering I play so many indie games. Like, I have an entire bookshelf in my room dedicated to indie boxes I get. I played, and I've played most of them at least once. And they're really good! I love indie games. Well, I fucking bought Axe and Verge despite not getting the indie box for it. I bought it because I heard good things about it, and you know what? Was not disappointed. Axum Verge is fucking amazing. Maybe I should play some of that. It's basically just fucking Metroid. It's basically Metroid, although it feels a little more like you get a bigger fuck. You get a bigger sense of dread from it. Probably should have been paying more attention to that. Oh well, I'm gonna go grab my money. This game better have my money. I know I've been talking way too much. I hope I edit out some of this. Because I really don't want to have to be going on too long. I also don't want to play too many levels in one go. I think I'll probably make it like two or three levels tops per, per uh, episode. Depending on how fast I can get past them. Woo! Oh yeah, got my money back. Some people say this uh, game is hard, too. It is when you first play through it. Your first playthrough will be a bit challenging, but beyond that, it's easy. Beyond the first playthrough, it's just it's just an easy game. Like, but that's because you learn it. You learn all the ins and outs of the game, and you start to get better because you know everything. Already. Which I think that's pretty cool because like it really makes you feel like you've gotten better at the game, just because you've learned it. You've taken the time to actually learn how the game plays and how it works. And thus, you get better. It's the same thing of, like, why Binding of Isaac is really hard, and while it is a lot of luck as to what items you get, you also kind of gotta learn which items to leave behind, which items to use, which items to re-roll, if you have the unmarked item to re-roll them. Because you gotta know the effects of everything. Some items are not going to be good. Some items are only good if they're synergized with something. You know? And this game, like, you gotta learn the ins and outs of levels to be able to play this a lot better. And I think that's good because it really allows you to feel like you've gotten smarter, so your strategies have gotten better. Ouch. Ouch. Don't worry, I got this. There we go. The griffin's dead. Which I feel bad about, because I actually really think it was adorable. Sorry, little mouse. Hup, hup. Ha ha! 
Have at thee, sir! Fuck off. Take this! Look, okay, in the, in the, uh... The reason I do want to get... The only reason I'd want to buy the PS4 version... Like, even after having three versions of the game, by the way... Is... The only reason I'd want to do that... Is purely because of the fact that the PS4 version has the Kratos boss fight... And a specific suit of armor you get for beating it, like... The, um... The Xbox One version... Well, first off, I don't have an Xbox One. Secondly, even if I did, I don't think I'd buy it on there, because while the Battletoads boss fight is cool, and fucking hard as balls, um, from what I've heard and seen, the game also, um, that boss fight, it just... They don't give you anything! Like, the Kratos boss fight gives you a unique suit of armor you can get. And it, it's actually, like, hidden, too, so it's, like, it's not right up in your face. It's, it's, you only can get to it if you've completed an optional part of the game. Shouldn't have done that. Oh no, never mind, I can just jump to it. There we go, perfect. Aha, take this! I love fighting these things. Aha! Okay, actually forgot that was there. I know most of these secrets, but I actually forgot that that one was there. Oh man. That's interesting. Cool though. I love this game. I, I know I've said that so much, I sound like a broken record, and I'm sorry, but I love it. It's, there's just. Everything about this game is just so good. I mean, I, there are a, a few flaws, but nothing of that really actually needs to be fixed that bad. Like, it's all stuff I can deal with, kind of flaws. I think that's the best part. That's the, that's the best kind of flaw to have in a game. A flaw where it's like, you know what, I can deal. Oh. Thanks a lot. Haha! Oh. -ha. Take that! You won't be getting much. What's interesting though is that the game never tells you how to do these uh, shovel moves either. It's just kind of something you learn. And you learn it after playing the first level because you kind of got to explore and use the controls in order to get anything done. But yeah, you gotta, like, explore and use the controls in order to get anything done, you know? Which is, which is pretty cool. Like, you gotta, the game expects you to learn on your own and not to hold your hand throughout the entire game. And it makes it easy enough to learn because it throws stuff at you that you need to use that to progress without a fear of dying. Which is perfect! Okay. An interloper is in all midst. Be gone from our throne room, knave! I don't know what the fuck I'm doing for him. I'm no more an intruder than you! You aren't even a real king! Oh, but your mistake. The enchanter saw me for, the, for my fabulous, like, regal self. Why did I, why did I go half Cockney British and half, uh, uh, half Southern? Like, it really fucked up with my... Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna read him in a specific voice. I'm just gonna go, like... I'm just gonna do what Game Grumps did for Shovel Knight's voice for him. You're not but a decadent dandy. Prepare to taste justice! Shovel justice! Well, I'm gonna do that for him now. That's his new voice. That's King Knight's new voice throughout the entirety of this game now. Oh, shit! Aha! Aha! Jam it up your pee hole! Fucking. And now I got Game Grumps-isms stuck in my head. Various 
the various grumpisms that they use. Bye. Knock that crown off your fucking head. Oh man. Yeah. Man, I, I just, I can't, I can't hold back from how much I actually do love it. It's, it's hard for me to stop talking about it. It really is. Hopefully the next episode doesn't involve me talking about, about how much I love this game like a fucking dingus. I just got way too excited. Because I'm, I, I do. It's fun. I would highly recommend this game to anyone. Like, if you love platformers, 2D action platformers, you will love this game. It is made for you. And it looks like we got, um, this game's equivalent to the Hammer Brothers on the map here. So you know what? I think I'll leave this episode here. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button down below. If you want to see more of my videos and stay up to date, join the Council of 2000 and subscribe today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see all you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.